Welcome to Simple Truth Gospel with Kirian Uzoeshi. Today, I am teaching on a very important subject which I have titled Bible Simple Truth About Your Words. In other words, the power of your words. Before we continue, let's have a word of prayer. Father, I pray for utterance today that I will speak boldly to your people as the oracle of God. That you will make my tongue as a pen of a ready writer. But I pray for the anointing of your spirit. Anointing that will teach us, enlighten us, guide us, lead us into all the truth. Holy Spirit, you are the teacher. I pray that you will open the eyes, the ears, the heart of each and everyone listening to this message, wherever they are listening from. Please enlighten the eyes of their understanding minister to each and every one of them simultaneously give to them what you want them to get out of today's teaching let the light of your glorious revelation shine on our part give us answers for now we will always propose to be not just hearers but doers of the word of god but I thank you because you will always cause us to triumph and give us victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Blessed be your holy name. It is not always none of me, but all of you will be praised and glorified. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I welcome everyone to today's teaching. And like I said earlier, I am teaching on this subject, the power of your tongue. The power of your words, the things that come out of your own mouth, the power of your words. Before we continue, I would like to read a text to you from Romans chapter 2 all the way to chapter from Romans chapter 10, verse 2, all the way to verse 4. And it says, Brethren, my heart desire and prayer to God for Israel is that they will be saved. For I bear them record that they have a zeal for God, but not according to knowledge. For they, being ignorant of the word of God, and going about establishing their own righteousness, have not, they have not submitted themselves unto the righteousness of God. For Christ is the end of the law for righteousness to anyone who believes. So this is Paul writing to the church at Rome and he's talking about Israel, ignorance, about righteousness. So I know he's talking about ignorance here, but it is the same principle all over the topics. He's saying that Israel have a zeal for God. They really want to do right by God. They want to worship God. They want to do what God says. But the problem is that they are doing it in a wrong way. They are going about it in a wrong way. They don't have the knowledge. They are going about it through their traditions, through their human doctrines, through their missionary, through their own ways. Not understanding how the Bible says they should go about it. Jesus Christ, even in their midst, he, 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 he says, you err. Not understanding the scriptures, not knowing the scriptures, nor the power of God. And he tells them again, he says, you search the scriptures because in them you think you have eternal life. And they are there that bear testimony of me, but you will not come to me that you will have life. So he's talking to them. He's talking to them. He said that they, they missed the time of their visitation. Even though Christ, the Messiah, was in their midst, they did not recognize that he was there. Why? Because of the ignorance of the word of God. What am I saying all of this? There are so many Christians in the church. They are going by human doctrines, by traditions in the church. They are forsaking the ways, the things that the Bible says. And they are erring. They are going in the wrong direction. Why? Because of their ignorance. So 
Ignorance can cost somebody too much. It can cost you a lot. The truth is found in the Word of God. So today, we are going to go straight into the Word of God and find out what does the Bible say about your words. So that we are not in ignorance. We are not going about human traditions and religion that never give anybody any light, but put so many people in darkness. So we are going to go to the wisdom, the knowledge, the sound mind of God that is given to us in his word. We're going to find out today what does the Bible say about the power of your words. There are so many people because of what they have spoken in the past. The way they are talking even right now. Why? Because they are talking out of ignorance. They don't know the power of their own words. They have been bound, hemmed in, in so many areas of their life. They're not making progress. Why? Because of the way they speak. They don't understand the power of their words, the power of their tongue, the things that come out of their mouth. So this is why we're going to go straight into the scriptures right now so that I can show you what the Bible says about your words. Now, let's start with the, with the power in God's word. Remember, we are children of God and we are called to be imitators of Christ. So let's look at the Heavenly Father and look at his own words, the power that is in his word. And then we can apply those things to our own personal lives today for a life that will be filled with success and victory. Blessed be the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, this is how God creates. By words. God creates by words and he also blesses by words. In Genesis, you can see so many places where God says, Let that be. Let that be. Light be. And light became. He called those things into being by his own words. We also see God blessing. He, he blessed Adam and Eve and said, Be fruitful and multiplied through words of his mouth. He blessed Noah, be fruitful and multiply to the words of his mouth. So we can see the maker of the whole universe, the way he operates, the way he created the world that you and I can see today is through his own words. The way that he blesses people is through his own words. Now, let me give you more scriptures about the word of God, the authenticity of God's word. The power that lies in God's word. Remember that God, he has faith in his words. And when he speaks those things, they don't have any choice. <laughs> they must come to pass. That's how important it is. It's as simple as that. So now, in Hebrews chapter 1, verse 3, the Bible says that he upholds the universe by the word of his power. So this heaven and the earth, you and I, we can see today we live in, on, in, on earth, is being held together by the word of God, the power of his word, the word of his own power is what is holding this word that we, you and I live together, is what is holding it together, is what is holding the universe together, the sun and the moon together. Without the, 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 the word of God, the power in his word, this universe will self-destroy itself, but they are held in place together. By the word of God. The word of God. In Psalm 33 verse 6. The Bible says. By the word of God. Were the heavens made. And all the host of them. By the breath of his mouth. Did you hear what he says? He says. By the word of God. Were the heavens made. And all the hosts of them. By the breath of his mouth. So you see. The heaven and the earth. The sun, the moon, the stars, everything that you can see, they say, the Bible tells you that they were created by the word of God. Words. This is the power of word. He made every one of them. In Isaiah chapter 55 verse 1, the Bible says, So shall my word that goes forth out of my mouth, he says, it shall not return to me void, but it shall accomplish that which I please. 
and it shall prosper in the thing where I, where unto I sent it. That is the, this. That is what this, this. is what God is saying. The rain will come down from heaven, from the for the reason to water the earth. It doesn't come halfway and say, "I changed my mind, so I'm going up again." But it comes down. It waters the earth before it goes up. The same thing God is saying. He says the words that come out of His mouth. He says they will not return back to Him void. This is how powerful the Word of God is. But He says He shall prosper in the thing where unto I sent it. He will accomplish in that which I place. This is the this is the Word of God. And the same way that the Word of God will never go back to Him void. Is the way you and I, if we believe in God, if we are the children of God, our words should never go come back to us void. It must accomplish the things wherewith we send it to accomplish. Remember that the Bible says that heaven and earth will pass away, but the word of God will never pass away. The heaven and the earth, they will someday. But he says his word will still stand firm. He says that he, he uphold the universe, like I said earlier, by the word of his mouth, the word of his power. God is not a man that he should lie, or a son of man that he should repent. Has he said, and he shall not do it? Has he spoken, and he shall not make it good? This is how important the word of God is. When he says something, he will make it good. When he says something, he will make it good. The Bible says forever your word is settled in heaven. Forever the word of God is settled. I'm giving you all these references so that you will know how important the word of God is. Because I want you to have that knowledge of how important the word of God is how powerful the word of God is when you get when you get the revelation you will change your world to conform with the word of God so that you will get the same result that God gets every time he speaks his own word are you hearing me my friends the Bible says that he has exalted his word above all his names you know all the names God God is called in the Bible. He says he's exalted his word above all this name. Are you hearing that? So now, in Ephesians chapter 5 verse 1. Ephesians chapter 5 verse 1. He says, Be you therefore followers of God as their children. Another translation will say, Be you imitators of God as their children. We are created in the likeness and the image of God. He is our own heavenly father. Man is a spirit. He has a soul. He lives in a body. God said that he created us in his own image. And because he says he created us in his own image and likeness means that we have the ability to do the things the way that he does things. He calls the things that be not as though they were. And they will obey him always. We got the abilities as well to be able to call things that be not as though they were. Remember, by words, true words, spoken words, Jesus Christ cursed the fig tree and they withered away. True spoken words, Jesus Christ said, Lazarus, come forth. And he that was there came forth. Through words, Jesus Christ calmed the sea and rebuked the wind. Through words, Jesus Christ healed so many people by his word. He cast out devils and demons by his own words. Words. We're talking about words today, my friends. Oh, by the end of today's teaching, you will know the power of words. And I pray that things will change. 
as soon as you get hold of this teaching and you apply it every day in your life, I am assuring you there will be a big change in your life. To the glory of the Father Almighty, blessed be the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Remember that two words, Abraham blessed Isaac. True words, Isaac blessed Esau and Jacob. True words, Jacob blessed not only his children, but also the sons of Joseph, Manasseh and Ephraim. True words, true words, the importance of words. Now I have spoken to you about God's word. How important his words are. Now let's talk about your own words. What does the Bible say about your own words? Not the word, not God, not, we're not talking about God now. We're talking about you who is a child of God. Who, who has been called, created in the image and in the likeness of God. Called to be an imitator of Christ. What does the Bible say about your own words? Follow me in segments, friends. Oh, we're getting to this teaching right now. Now, let me take you to, we, we, we're going to read the Bible now. So I'm going to take you to um, um, uh, James chapter 3. We're going to go to James chapter 3. And uh, I would like you to get hold of this because this will mean so much to you. It will change a lot for you because it did for me. So and I'm sure that it will, it will change your life. It will make things turn around for your good. Blessed be the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. So we are, we are reading James. James chapter 3. We're going to read verse 1 all the way to uh, verse 6. And if you will open your Bible to that, James chapter 3, verse 1 all the way to 6. We are going to read the NLT translation, uh, which is so that it's easy for you to understand this. Uh, NLT translation. Verse 1, it says, Dear brothers and sisters, not many of you should become teachers in the church, for we who teach will be judged more strictly. So he's just talking about not everyone should become a teacher because there will be condemnation, there will be judgment if you teach people the wrong thing. So in verse 2, indeed, we all make many mistakes. For if we could control our tongues, we would be perfect and could also control ourselves in every other way. Now he's getting into the tongue. It's telling you now how important the tongue is. The words that come out of your mouth. He said that we make so many mistakes. But if a man does not make mistake in what he says. He says this is a perfect man. The word perfect there doesn't mean that he's flawless. But he's someone who is matured. Who have grown. That's what the perfect is there. And, uh, and uh, who, who, who is matured, who is grown, who is developed. That's what that prophet means there. And he says, and, and, and because of that, he says that uh, you could control every other thing in your body. You can control the course of your life, where it goes. You can control how you go in life and where you go. He says, through the tongue, through your mouth, the words that come out of your mouth. Verse 3, he says, We can make a large horse go wherever we want to, wherever we want, by means of a small bit in his mouth. So you see as big as a horse is. But just with a small bit in his, in his mouth, you can control that horse and it goes wherever you want that horse to go. It is making reference to your mouth. It says with your mouth, with your tongue, you can control your whole life to wherever you want your life to be. Verse 4, it says, And a small rudder makes a huge ship turn wherever the pilot chooses to go, even though the winds are strong. Are you hearing that? So as big as the, the, the ship is, it's telling you that with a small rudder, he says that you can, the pilot can control the ship even though there be strong winds in the, in the, in the sea 
blowing. He says with a small rotor, the pilot can control wherever he chooses this ship to go. He's still comparing the tongue. He says with the tongue, you can control your whole life. Blessed be the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I pray that you get hold of this teaching today. Verse 5. And it says, in the same way, the tongue is a small thing that makes grand speeches. Did you hear that? He said, the tongue is a small thing. Very small. You see? The small thing. You know the size of your mouth and the tongue. But he said, it's, it's very small. But he says, it makes grand speeches. Big speeches. Says a lot. And he says, but a tiny spark can set a great forest on fire. He says, with the tongue, as small as it is. He compares it like it can set the whole forest on fire with your tongue. Now in verse 6, and he says, and the tongue is a flame of fire. Can you hear that? It's a flame of fire. It is a whole world of wickedness corrupting your entire body. With your tongue, you can corrupt the whole body. You cor corrupt your destination in life. Corrupt your way of life, your course of life. He says with the words, with the tongue, you can make all these things happen. It can set your whole life on fire. Did you see that? With your mouth, you can put fire all over your own house, your life, the people around you, the thing that pertains to you. He says with the tongue that you can set every one of them ablaze. This is what the word of God is saying today. And it says, for it is set on fire by hell itself. Blessed be the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. So this is what the Bible says about your own tongue. So there are so many people, so many Christians, and because they don't understand the power of words or the power of tongues, they speak whatever they want to speak. And they have been hemmed in for so many years in a particular direction. They don't want to go in that direction, all right? But what they say in every day is why they are where they are today. Because they don't understand what the Bible says about how you can change your whole life with your own tongue. This is the reason why they're still where they are. And the purpose of this teaching is to give you that understanding that you can make a man today and change and repent the way that you've been talking. So that will be a fundamental and dynamic change in the results that you will get in your life henceforth. Blessed be the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. In Proverbs, Proverbs chapter 18, verse 20 and 21. Proverbs 18, 20, 21. And it says, A man's belly shall be satisfied with the fruit of his mouth. And with the increase of his lips shall he be filled. So he says, A man's belly shall be satisfied with the fruit of his mouth. And with the increase of his lips shall he be filled. And then he says, Death and life is in the power of the tongue. Those who love it, we eat the fruit thereof. Do you hear that? He says, A man's belly shall be satisfied with the fruit of his mouth, and with the increase of his lips shall he be filled. If you want to see prosperity in your bank account, if you want to see progress, promotion in your job, if you want to see that business growth, if you want to see peace, prosperity, understanding, wisdom, He's telling you that it got to be in your mouth first. You have to speak it forth. That's what, that, uh, uh, that's what it's telling you. And then it tells you that life, death and life is in the power of the tongue. He says, those who love it will eat the fruit thereof. If you speak death with your mouth, he says you're going to eat death. If you speak blessing, with your mouth. He says the fruit of blessing is what you're going to see. Did you hear that? That's what the Bible says. Do not give room to Satan. Don't give a place to him. That's what the Bible says in Ephesians 4.27. Give no place to the Satan, to the devil. So if you don't want him, if you don't want to give him any room, because we give him a room, we give him a place in our life by what we say, 
He says, death and life is in the power of the tongue. Those who love it will eat the fruit thereof. If you want to eat the fruit of death or evil, which is the same way as giving Satan an end roll to your life, then he's telling you here, it is the power is in your tongue. With your tongue, you will give him that access to your life. And with your tongue, you can shut him down and speak only that which will create life, victory, prosperity, and success in your life. Blessed be the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. So many people, in, in, in Proverbs chapter 6, verse 2, Proverbs chapter 6, verse 2, he says, you, we are snail, or you are snail by the words of your mouth. Which means you are held in captivity by the things that come out of your mouth. So many people are where they are today because of the things they have spoken in the years past. They have only spoken things that are negative, things that are pessimistic, things that are destructive. This is what they have spoken with their mouths over the years. They have created this life for themselves, not knowing because of ignorance. Remember the text that I read earlier, Romans chapter 10, verse 2. It says, For they be ignorant of the righteousness of God, and going about establishing their own righteousness, have not submitted themselves unto the righteousness of God. Because they were ignorant was the reason why they did not submit themselves to the righteousness of God. These people, or some of us, we are in the place where we are today because of ignorance. Because of the thing that we have spoken in the realm of the spirit over the years past. And this has taken control. They took control of our lives. And now we are where we are. Because we are still speaking the same. But friends, there is still time to change. If you will get hold of this. And if you will repent today and change your course. Change the way you speak. Change what comes out of your mouth you will begin to see a very big change in your own life at all. You will begin to see your, 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 your life begin to go in that direction that you want it to go. Blessed be the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. In 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 10, 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 10, he says, For he that will love life and see many days, many good days, he says, let him restrain his tongue from evil and his lips that he speaks no guile for him that will love life and see good days he's telling you here if you want to love life which means you want to prosper you want to be successful and then live long see good days it tells you where the secret lies the, are you hearing that, my friends? It, it gives you where the secret lies. It tells you it's, it lies in your tongue. It says, let him refrain his tongue from evil and his lips that he speaks no guile, that he speaks no deception, that he speaks no lies. Are you hearing me, my friend? This is a giveaway. The word of God, oh, blessed be the name of the Lord. The word of God, you see, you know, it has all the answers to any question that you can ask. It gives a solution to any problem that you can ever be in. It's found in the written word of God. Explained to us by the power of the Holy Ghost. And pulls to manifestation in the name of Jesus Christ. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Now, in Proverbs chapter 13, verse 3, the Bible says, he that keeps his mouth keeps his life. But he that opens wide his lips shall have destruction. Did you hear that? If you want to keep your life, he's telling you that. He says, keep your mouth. But if you want to see destruction, he says, open wide your mouth and speak. Speak whatever you want. Destruction will come. Are you hearing me? Every Real friends that I'm giving you today is from the word of God and he's telling you about your words, your tongue, your mouth. That the key to the success you will have in your life is dependent on your mouth, on your tongue. How much you prosper, how far you go, the things that you can lay hold on, that are, that are beautiful, 
He's telling you now that it, they all depend on what comes out of your mouth. This is the word of God, friends. In Proverbs chapter 12, verse 6, he says, The word of the wicked are to lie in wait for blood, but the mouth of the upright shall deliver them. Did you hear that? He says, The mouth of the upright shall deliver them. The mouth of the upright. What comes out of the mouth of the upright shall give them life, shall give them success, shall give them victory, shall deliver them, shall bring them to the place of perfection, the place of goodness, oh, the place of joy. He says, What comes out of the mouth of the upright, it shall deliver them, it will give them victory and life. Then why are we saying the wrong thing? Why have we chosen to speak God? Things that bring destruction. And then we're going to turn around and say, What is God doing in my life? He's not done so much. And we'll turn around and point fingers to friends, to relatives, to people around, around about us. And say, they are the reason why I am not prospering. But the word of God is telling you, leave them alone. They are not the reason. He says, the reason lies in your tongue, in the words that come out of your mouth. Are you hearing me, somebody? Let me give you more references because the word of God, oh, blessed be the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, is a light, is a light, is a lamp unto our feet and the, and the light unto our path. Are you hearing that? That's the word the word of God says. The entrance of the word of God gives light. Oh, blessed be the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, in Mark chapter 11 verse 23, Mark eleven twenty three. If thou shalt say to this mountain, Be thou cast out and be moved into the sea, and shall not doubt in your heart, but shall believe that those things which you have said shall come to pass, he said, He shall have whatsoever he says. Whosoever shall say unto this mountain, Be thou removed and be cast into the sea. Shall not doubt in his heart. I hear that he says, whosoever, whosoever means anybody. Anybody is qualified when the word, when whosoever is used. He says, if you speak those things with your mouth, that you do not doubt in your heart. He says, the things which you say will come to pass. Do you know the reason why people say so many things and they don't come to pass? They say all kind of wrong things and they don't see the manifest. Do you know the reason why? Because they don't believe it yet. But remember the Bible says, faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word of God. The same way faith in fear or evil will come by hearing and hearing by the words that depict evil or fear. It's just a matter of time until you begin to see them come to pass. Because remember, the more you hear them, the more you hear them, the more you begin to believe them. And there will come a time when you, your heart, your spirit will get hold of those things. And they will come to pass, whether good or evil. It's just a Bible principle. That's what the word of God says. In Malachi, Malachi chapter 3 verse 13, the word of God says, Your words have been stout against me. God is saying, even though that I am God, the creator, maker of all things, he says, there is nothing that is impossible for me. There is nothing that I cannot do. Who has said and it come to pass when God has not decreed it? But he says, in the midst of all this, your word has been stout against me. Your word is too strong for me. Your word have hindered me from doing the things that I want to do for you. Because you spoke it in your mouth. And it hindered me. And now you cannot get those good things which you're supposed to get from me. Why? Because your mouth, the things that came out of your mouth, they hindered me. Says the Lord God of hosts. Remember the Israelites in the desert. When they were trying to make their way to the promised land. They sent out a representative from each tribe and they went to spy out the, the, the promised land. And when they came back, 10 of them brought home a full report. 
They say there are giants in the land. We could not take that land. They are too big for us. Oh, they're going to destroy us. This is what they spoke out of their mouth. And when God heard what they said, he said unto them, Now I'm going to give you the thing that you have said. For one day, each day that you spent sparing the promised land will be the number of years that you will spend in the wilderness wandering. And you know what the result was. Every one of them, from 20 years up, perished in the wilderness. Why? God was willing to give them the promised land. He gave it to them already. It was a promise made to them. But with the words of their mouth, they defeated themselves. They hindered God. They resisted God. And they were bound in death. They all perished. This is what speaking the wrong thing can do to any child of God. Friends, we ought not to speak like the, those who are without those who are without God in their lives. We ought to speak the word of God. You see, victory will only come when we speak the right things in our lives. Blessed be the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, what are we supposed to speak with our mouth? We have talked about God, the way he created the heaven and the earth, the way he blesses through words. The works that Jesus Christ did, two words. Abraham and the Patriots blessed their own children through words. And we have read so many references about what the Word of God says about our own words. How they can be destructive in our lives. Now, I'm going to let you in on what shall we say then with our mouth? <laughs> Blessed be the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now I want to read to you Ephesians. Ephesians chapter 2 verse 29. Ephesians chapter 2 verse 29. And the Bible says, Let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth, but that which is good on to the use of edifying, that it may minister grace to the hearers. Do you hear that? Let no, no, let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth. But it says, But that which is good to the use of edifying, that it may minister grace to the hearers. This is what should come out of our mouth. The thing that will minister grace to ourselves and the people around us. He tells us not to speak words that are filled with corruption, corrupt communications. He says the thing that we ought to speak from our mouth will be the thing that will minister grace, gracious words of God, words of blessings, words of faith, words of hope, words that will give life. This is what we ought to speak with our mouth. Am I reading the word of God to you, friends? Yeah, we are reading the word of God. Now, we ought to build ourselves up every day with the word of God. That is why the Bible says, you got to search the scriptures, study the scriptures to prove yourself. He says, a workman, a workman, you should study the scriptures to prove yourself. That so that you can rightfully divide the word of truth. A workman that needs not to be ashamed. Rightfully dividing the word of truth. We ought to put our nose in the word of God. To know what the word of God says. Because remember what the Bible says. Out of the abundance of the heart. The mouth speaks. In Luke chapter 6 verse 45. A good man. Out of the good treasure of his heart, bring forth good things. An evil person, evil man, out of the evil treasure of his heart, bring forth evil things. And he says, out of the abundance of the heart, the, man, the mouth will speak. If you will put the word of God in your heart, if you will deposit the word of God in your spirit, the Bible says, they will have no choice but to come out every time you open your mouth. Are you hearing me now? Very important principle in the kingdom of God. Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth will speak. If you put evil in there, 
continuously on a daily basis at the time of emergency when you open your mouth evil will proceed they are not premeditated that's what has been deposited in there and that's what will come out if you have deposited good in your spirit regardless of the circumstance when you open your mouth the only thing that will come out will be good this is how we will build up our spirit with the word of God. That we will speak nothing but what the word of God says. Let us come to the place of agreement with the word of God. Let what the word of God says be what comes out of our mouth. In every circumstance, in every situation, what we say to other people, how we channel the course of our life, how we bless other people, how we have our daily conversations. Remember in Hebrews chapter 3, Verse 5. The Bible says, He will never leave you nor forsake you. That we may boldly say, The Lord is my helper. I shall not fear what men should do unto me. Did you hear that? He says, He will never leave us nor forsake us. And it tells you now, it is your own job, your own duty to speak the same thing in consent. And in so saying, you will say, The Lord is my helper, I shall not fear what men shall do unto me. Let your words be what the word of God already said. We having the same spirit of faith, according as it is written, I believe, therefore have I spoken. We also believe and we speak. So when you speak in accordance with the word of God, do you know what's going to happen? There will be breakthroughs. You will see good. Things will turn for better in your life. That's what it's going to be. Now in Matthew, Matthew chapter 12 verse 36, Jesus Christ the Bible says, But I say unto you, that every idle word that a man should speak, they shall give account thereof in the day of judgment. You hear what Jesus Christ is saying here? Every idle word that a man will speak, he said, on the day of judgment, they're going to give account of it. What is an idle word? Words that are not productive? I'm just saying, you know, when people will say, I'm just saying. Words that don't deliver life. Words that produce death. He says, every one of them that a man should speak on the day of judgment, are you hearing me? They will give account of it. <laughs> so what? That, why will we speak things that are not productive? In First Peter chapter three verse nine, I'm giving you so many, so many references. It, it, it will behoove you to listen to this message so many times. Because so many information I'm giving you in a short period of time. But spend time listening to this message over and over again so that you can get more revelation out of it. In 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 9, the Bible says, Not rendering evil for evil or railings for railing, but, con but contrawise blessing, knowing that we are here thereon to call that you. That you should inherit a blessing. He says we should not render evil for evil. You know, there are people sometimes they say, they said it to me first. So I turn around and I cast them out. You see what I'm saying? Even if they said it to you first, Jesus Christ said that we should bless those that who curse us. We we'll bless them. He said we don't, we, we don't render railings for railings. We don't. But rather, he says, we speak blessings. He says, Kawa is blessing. That's what we speak out of our mouth. Not only that we speak out blessings, it also reminds us that uh, we are called to inherit a blessing. When you speak out the blessing from your mouth, it comes back to you. You will inherit one. Blessed be the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, remember in Matthew chapter 18, verse 18, the Bible says, Whatsoever you shall bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. Whatsoever you shall lose on earth shall be loose in heaven. Now, how do you bind? 
and lose. It's through your words. Through the word of God. And heaven is there to back you up. That's what he's saying. If you will speak in accordance to the word of God. If you will speak words that agree with the word of God. On earth here. Father God is saying. Jesus Christ is saying. That he will back it up in heaven. Can you? Are you hearing what I'm saying? So don't speak words of death. Words that are pessimistic. Words that will destroy. The words that are unproductive. Do not speak them from your mouth. Let them not come out of your mouth. Let them not proceed from your mouth. But speak the words that are edifying. Words that build up. Those words that are blessing to people all around you. These are the words that we are called to speak all the days of our life. Blessed be the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, in the multitude of words, there was no sin. In Proverbs chapter 10, verse 19. In the multitude of words, there was not sin. What this is saying here in a simple English is, show me the one that is speaking all the time, and I will show you the one that is sinning a lot. He's telling you here, the more you talk, the more you talk. He says, the more you will sin, the more you will speak things that defies. You will, you will speak things that will, 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 will create death. You will speak things that are unproductive. You will speak many idle words. That's what he's telling you here. In a multitude of words, there are words not sin. There is, you cannot say, you cannot look for sin where there is a multitude of words. Remember, a fool is known by the multitude of his words. So we got to be mindful, conscious of how much we talk. And you hear me, friends? The more you speak, the more guile you speak. The possibility to, come, to speak sin. Because multitude of words will have also multitude of sin found in them. This is what the Bible is saying. Now, we have to yield our tongue to the Lordship of our Lord Jesus Christ. If you said you were born again, you are a child of God, then speak those things that if Jesus Christ were to stand in your face, that you would not be ashamed of the words. Speak like he is standing right there in front of you and listening to everything that you got to say. Remember what they say in Psalm 12, verse 4. Psalm 12, verse, verse 4. And it says, and it, and it says, Who have said with our tongue, we will prevail? Our lips are our own, who is Lord over us. They are being braggadocious. Our lips are our own. Who is Lord over us? That's what they're saying. And because they took control of their lips and they rendered iniquity and calamity, the things that befell them were the things that uh, were evil. Those are the things that they called for. And these are the things that they received. Are you hearing me? They were so bold to say, our lips are our own. Who is Lord over us? Are you that Christian who says that? That your lips is your lips? Who is Lord over you? Jesus Christ ought to be your Lord and your Savior. Whatever you say ought to agree with what he says in his own word. That's being submissive to the authority and the lordship of our Lord Jesus Christ. In everything that you say and do. Blessed be the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now. Your mouth is not only for you to eat. And, 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 and you know there are some people. <laughs> that's the, thing that the, the, the only thing for the mouth is to eat. You know to talk and all that. But remember your mouth is an instrument. An agent of, a, of, of, of life. With your mouth, you channel the course of your life. 
With your mouth, you mouth is like a steering wheel. Your mouth. A steering wheel that you can steer your life to the direction that you want it to be. That's what the mouth is for. To the word of God. By the power of the Holy Ghost. In the name of Jesus Christ. Are you hearing me, friends? You know the greatest miracle, which I, I say the greatest miracle is the miracle of salvation. Be born again when your spirit is recreated by the power of the Holy Ghost into a spirit a species that never is creature that never existed before. Do you know that in salvation it takes your the word of your mouth to be saved? Yes, in Romans chapter 10, verse 9. If thou wilt confess with your mouth, Lord Jesus. And believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Are you hearing that? In salvation, it takes the words of your mouth. If the biggest miracle takes the word that comes out of your mouth to be accomplished, how much more other things in your life? And in verse 10, it says, For with the heart, men believe unto righteousness. But with the mouth, confession is made unto salvation. Salvation unto completeness, unto wholeness. Unto healing, unto salvation, with your mouth. He says, confession is made unto salvation. When you speak, what you speak in with your mouth is what gets you to salvation. Are you hearing me, somebody? In James chapter 1 verse 19, it says, be swift to hear, but slow to speak. Slow to anger. Listen. Be very swift to listen. But it tells you now when you're going to speak. Slow. Be slow when you speak. Don't open your mouth and speak. Oh, within a second you just speak so many things. Without even thinking about it. Be, say, be slow. Take it easy. Think first. Before you can speak it out. Pause. Wait a minute. Before you respond, a righteous man will study to answer. That's what the Bible says. A wise man studies to answer. Don't open your mouth and speak out immediately. In the midst of anger, he says, you can be angry. You can be angry, but don't sin. That's what the Bible says. Give yourself a minute or two minutes or three minutes before you answer. Now look for the words within you. Look, the, look for the words by the Spirit of God within you. Ask Him to give you the words to say. The words that will minister life. The words that will edify the hearers. Don't just speak because you are angry. Be slow. To speak. But you got to be very swift now to listen. Blessed be the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. In Job chapter 22 verse 28. You remember what Bible says about Job? Thou shalt also decree a thing. And it shall be established unto you. And the light shall shine upon your ways. Thou shalt also decree a thing. And it shall be established unto you. Are you hearing me friends? When you decree the right things, the word of God says, it shall be established unto you. And the light, the glorious light, the, the marvelous light of our Lord Jesus Christ shall shine in your ways. Blessed be the name of the Lord because you decreed the right things. Now, you remember the woman with the issue of blood in the Bible. The Bible says, she said, if only I shall touch the hem of his garment. If only I can touch the hem of his garment, I shall be made whole. Was she made whole? Yes, she, she was made whole. She spoke it first. She decreed the thing. It was established unto her. You remember the story of David and Goliath? So many times, if you, if you read the account, 
If you, if you read the account very well, he says, David said so many things to Goliath. He did. He says, who is this uncircumcised Philistine that wants to defile the armies of God? He says, God will deliver me from the hands of this uncircumcised Philistine. Are you hearing me? And he says, I will cut off your head. And the host, the rest of the host of uh, the armies of the Philistine, he says, I will feed the, the, the I will feed your carcass to the, the birds of the earth. David said, I will, I will, I will. And all that he said came to manifestation. Why? He decreed a thing, and it was established unto him. Blessed be the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, when you miss it, when you say something that you're not supposed to say, don't kill, don't, 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 don't condemn yourself. Just acknowledge that you miss it. Ask God to forgive you. Remember in First John one nine. If we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Just acknowledge that you said the wrong thing. Father, I miss it. I'm sorry that I said the wrong thing. But I ask you to forgive me. I don't mean it. It's not going to happen as I have spoken. Thank you, O Lord. I receive forgiveness in the name of Jesus. It's as simple as that. And then move on. Let the words that come out of your mouth to be the words that will minister grace to the hearers. Not only to the hearers, but to yourself. Your words ought to be words of success. I am blessed going out. I am blessed coming in. Anything I lay my hands prosper. I am the head and never the tail. Above and never beneath. I am the righteousness of God. God has blessed me with all the spiritual blessings in heaven and places in Christ Jesus. He will always cause me to triumph. He will always give me victory. He has blessed me with all things that pertain to life and godliness. I am the light of the world. I am the sword of the earth. Anything I lay in my hands prosper. Angels of the Lord will always encamp around about me and deliver me from every destruction. I am blessed going out. I am blessed coming in. I lay down gold as dust. In destruction and infirmity, I shall laugh. For the lions are falling onto me in pleasant places. Yeah, I have a goodly heritage. You see, these are the things that should come out of your mouth. The number of the years of my life, the Lord will preserve. He will fulfill. Oh, a thousand may fall on my side, ten thousand on my right. They will never come close to me, for he is my strength and my light and my salvation, my deliverer. I am more than a conqueror. Oh, he's, gives, he's given me all things richly to enjoy. I am blessed of the Lord. Glory to his holy name. I walk in divine health every day. Oh, I am the light of this word. These are the things that you should be speaking, friends. Let them come out of your heart, mouth and meet them. And you will see a big change in your life. Blessed be the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. My good friends, now I have come to the end of today's teaching. If you are listening to this message and you are not yet born again, you are not a Christian, perhaps you may be a member of a church, even baptized in water, but you are not sure if you are a Christian or not. Why? Because you don't understand what it means to be a Christian. To be a Christian is that Jesus Christ is your Lord and your Savior. That you have laid aside your own personal works. The things that you have done. The things that you have achieved. You have put every one of them aside. And now you have you, you receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and your Savior. Confess him with your mouth. Believe that God raised him from the dead. And uh, you start uh, or you begin to have a personal relationship with him. This is what it means to be born again. So my friends, I'm asking you today, are you sure that you are born again? 
If you will die right now, do you know where you're going? If you are not very sure where you go if you will die this moment, chances are very high that you are not yet born again. But my friends, there is a very good news. The good news is that you don't have to wait any longer. That Jesus Christ himself has paid the price for all sins. He became the propitiation not only for our own sins, but the sins of the whole world. He did it all for us. And now he's given it to us as a precious gift. Only for those who will receive him as their Lord and Savior, they become born again. He's not asking you to do anything. He says, come as you are. Do not say, let me go put my axe together and become a better person. Then I will come and be born again and become a child of God. No, you could not do that on your own. Because every one of us has fallen short of the glory of God. For we have all sinned and all our righteousnesses are as filthy rags in the presence of the Lord Almighty. You cannot save yourself. That is why salvation is now made available as a gift. All you got to do is receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and as your Savior. And you will become born again. And the gift of eternal life will be impacted onto your spirit. He says, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in. And I will sup with him and him with me. He's not asking you too much. But remember friends. He is not going to take hold of you by force. You got to make a decision to open the door. For he is knocking at your door this very minute. This moment. Today is that day of salvation. The hour of giving your life to Jesus Christ has come. Don't let it pass you by again. Don't delay it any further. You don't know what is going to happen. You know why? We live in a very dangerous world. We live in a world that is very troubled. There are so many evil things all around us. It is estimated that about 155,000 people will die today. Just one day. And you do know where they go when they die. The answer is very simple. They have only two destinations. If they receive Jesus Christ while they are on earth as their Lord and their Savior, they will go up in heaven to be with Jesus Christ. If they reject Jesus, if they rejected him while they were here on earth, they will go to hell. Friends, there is such a place that is called hell. The Bible says hell from beneath is moved for thee to meet thee at their coming. He stirred up the dead for thee. There is a place of torment, a place of torture, a place of evil, a place of darkness, a place of fire and brimstone. You don't have to go there, friends. You don't have to go that direction. Why? Because the day, today, is the day of salvation. The day is the day of salvation. Now is the accepted time. Do not delay it any longer. Jesus Christ says, I am the way. The truth and the life. No one comes to the Father but by me. There is no other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. But the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ says, if you believe not that I am he, you shall die in your sins. There is no other way to heaven if not from through Jesus Christ. Remember, he was talking to Nicodemus and he says, Except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Today is that day that you've been waiting for. Don't let it pass you by again. Don't say that I belong to a different religion and we serve the same God. The only difference is the way we approach God. No, no, that's not true. Jesus says he is the only way. And the Bible tells us that if you reject Jesus Christ means that you have rejected the Father Almighty. And if you accept Jesus Christ means that you also accept the Father. You cannot separate the two. So today is that day that when you hear his voice, please do not harden your heart. But open it up. Open it wide and receive him today as your Lord and your Savior. 
He that believes on the Son has everlasting life, the Bible says. But he that believes not shall the wrath of God will abide in him. You don't want to see the wrath of God, friends. Now is a day of grace. It is a free gift given to anyone who will receive him. Why will you say no to a free gift of eternal life? So I will lead you now in a very simple prayer, friends. If you will pray this prayer with all your heart now. Meaning from the depth of your soul. You will become born again now. You will become a child of God. Your spirit will be recreated. You will become a new creature in Christ Jesus. And you will become the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Pray this prayer with me. Father, I come to you in the name of Jesus Christ. I believe he is your son. That he died for my sins on the cross. And you raised him up from the dead on the third day. Dear Lord Jesus Christ, I ask you this day to come into my life. And be my Lord and my Savior. I believe now that I'm born again. I'm a child of God. My sins are all washed away. Father, I thank you in the name of Jesus. Friends, if you pray that prayer, I just want to congratulate you and welcome you to the kingdom of God. You are now a Christian and you are now a child of God. There is another experience subsequent to salvation. We call it baptism of the Holy Spirit or infilling of the Spirit of God. It is evident by speaking with other tongues. If you go to my archive on YouTube, Simple Truth with Kirian, if you go to my archive, there is a teaching there that I titled, Speaking in Tongues is for Every Believer. If you lay hold of that teaching, it will walk you through, teach you, explain to you how you can be filled with the Spirit of God and speak with other tongues. Friends, remember that you are now a baby Christian if you are born again. You got to grow. Peter says, Desire the sincere make of the word of God that you may grow thereby. Remember, faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word of God. You got to get, get, get to a very good church where they teach the word of God. Get you a Bible. Put your nose in the word of God that you may grow so that Satan don't take advantage of what happened today. I want to use this opportunity to thank all our partners all over the world. Those that are helping us take the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ to different parts of the earth at no cost to them. If you would like to support us and be a partner to this ministry financially, please go to our website www.kuim.org and there is a donation button there how you can donate to help us even reach more people at no cost to them. Remember that he that receives a prophet in the name of a prophet shall also re receive the reward of a prophet. It is only those who hear the word of God and uh, put them in practice. They are the only ones who will reap the benefits of the word of God. Don't forget to go to our channel on YouTube, Simple Truth Gospel with Kiran Uzeshi, and subscribe so that you will get any you will get messages anytime we have new teachings available. Always there is an end, and your expectations will never be cut off. Blessed be the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Remain blessed in the Lord.